What's up y'all? It's Dr. Paul with another Golden Age comic book conservation video for Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we are continuing our video series in which we conserve this Golden Age comic book and prepare it for submission to CGC. In today's video, I'm going to dry clean this comic book and I'm going to feature a product that I've never shown you on the channel before. And it's a product that absolutely should be in your toolkit if you work on Golden Age or even Silver Age comic books regularly. So stick around because you won't want to miss it. Our conservation candidate is a copy of Flash Comics number 20 from August 1941, which means it's an early pre-war issue from the first period of the Golden Age of comic books. It includes stories for three members of the Justice Society of America, Flash, Hawkman, and Johnny Thunder, and has a total of 68 pages. In episode one of this series, we discussed how Flash Comics was the most successful anthology series published by All American Comics, Inc., one of the comic book companies that eventually became the company we know today as DC Comics. Flash Comics was published from January of 1940 through February of 1949, and the first issue famously has the first appearances of three members of the Justice Society of America, The Flash, Hawkman, and Johnny Thunder. Flash Comics number 20 is not a key issue, but being a pre-war Golden Age DC comic book means it will always be in demand as a collectible. And there are only 21 universal copies in the CGC census to meet that market demand, so this copy is definitely worth preserving. We did a walkthrough of the comic book to determine the condition and what flaws it had before developing a conservation plan to address any flaws we could in an effort to maximize the preservation and equity of this comic book. Overall, we decided we had a very solid collectible with great paper quality and only minor soiling. It did suffer from an apparent manufacturing defect that resulted in a rough cut on the top edge and subsequent tears in the first five wraps, as well as a small triangle missing from wrap number six. The cover has a spine split at the bottom of approximately two inches, but by far the greatest flaw we found was that there was an approximately one inch tear on the back cover that it had been repaired by gluing the paper back together. This amateur restoration job will rightly get our comic book regarded as restored by CGC with a purple label. And we estimated the grade to be approximately 3.5 to 4.0 restored. Then we presented our game plan to remove the restoration and conserve this comic book to maximize the enjoyment, preservation, and equity. Today, I'm going to dry clean this comic and feature a product that I think is invaluable for cleaning comic books with light soiling like this one. I've created a playlist for this video series. Check out the link if you missed episode one and want to watch it before we get started today. All right, let's get started cleaning this beauty. I have obviously clean and dry hands. I'm starting off with a cotton round here and I'm gonna check it often. One of the things we want to do is just make sure that we're removing anything on the surface, any surface dirt or contaminants, but we don't want to lift ink. Now I feel something here, sort of Princess in the Pea style, so I'm going to check not there. Not there either. I can still feel some kind of a bump. I don't feel... there it is. All right, some kind of a foreign substance in the book, and this is why we do this. If you had pressed the book before doing this process, you would have created a dimple all the way through the book. Again, Princess in the Pea style. So whatever this foreign substance is, I could feel it with the cotton round, and it just creates a little friction, a little drag. You can feel it with your fingers. Your fingers are extremely sensitive. Now that we'll use that little chisel to free that piece up, let's remove it with a cotton round. Make sure there's nothing left there. Mission accomplished. 
As I was saying, your fingers are extremely sensitive. You can feel a bump between the sizes of 10 to 20 microns on a surface, depending on how smooth the surface is. Your fingers can differentiate that. So even through a cotton round, and in fact, sometimes a cotton round will almost amplify your ability to feel something. So there's an area here that's dark. And I want to see if I can remove it with remove some of that soiling with the cotton round. It doesn't look like I can. But I'm not lifting any ink. You see this little here? It looks like it could be color rub or it could be some soiling. I'm not sure. I'm going to show you a tool that everybody should have in their toolkit. This is a document cleaning pad. Now, it may look like you should rub it around on the book, but that's not actually what you ought to do. I get this from Amazon. I have an affiliate link in the description if you are interested in getting one for yourself after you watch the video. See how I just squeeze the pad above the area that I want to clean? These are tiny eraser crumbs, and I'm just going to rub them around the area that I want to clean. If you drag the pad around, you're going to risk lifting ink in the pad. The pad itself can be somewhat abrasive. And I'm not saying for certain uses you wouldn't want to roll the pad around maybe. But for comic books, you just want to get the eraser crumbs on your book and rub them around with clean, dry fingers. And look how well that worked. That area there that didn't react to a cotton round at all, where we had some... I don't know if it was some soil or it kind of looked like color ink rub to me, but regardless, these eraser crumbs are making short work of it. And we just squeeze the document cleaning pad over it, rolled it around a few times. These little crumbs come out through the porous fabric of the pad. Look how clean that area is and it did not fade the yellow or lift the yellow discernibly at all. If it does lift anything from the surface, it does it in a uniform fashion so your eye isn't drawn to it. So it's superior to an eraser in that regard. I'm gonna flip the book over so that I can use cotton round on the back. I am gonna use the document cleaning pad on the entire book, so I'm just gonna leave those eraser crumbs there I don't really care that they're getting on the front of my book right now. And I'm going to wipe down the back. I want to complete this before moving on to cleaning the surface of the book with the eraser crumbs because if there are any tiny inclusions like these, foreign matter, I want to feel them now and I want to get them removed. So I'm going to use that little chisel again, pop that right off, and this one too. And then I can go back to working the cotton round over the surface of the book. We didn't really have anything here that could use, as far as I could tell, much eraser work. So I think what we're going to do is cotton round the surface, then move right on to the eraser crumbs from the document cleaning pad. And then if there's anything left that we couldn't deal with, with these two tools, then we may come in with an eraser. We'll see. These inks seem to be pretty color fast, more so than the inks on the recent All-American Comics issue that I cleaned with the Cotton Round, where brushing on the yellow or the red was lifting the ink very easily. I'm pressing a little bit more with the Cotton Round here than I did there and not lifting anything discernible at all. So. One more little adhesion here or something on the surface maybe. And then I think that's all that I can accomplish with the cotton round. I'm going to go back to this document cleaning pad. And this time I'm going to get more of the crumbs. So I'm just going to work this pad. You can squeeze it. You can jostle it. Whatever you need to do, you can tap it on the book even, but I don't like to let it touch the book at all because 
Although these eraser crumbs are non-abrasive, the pad itself can be abrasive. And I have a little hole in the pad, unfortunately, here. So I don't want to dump too many crumbs out, so I think I'll pinch that hole. Yeah, I'll pinch that and squeeze the pad so that I don't dump too many of the crumbs out. Right, now that I have the crumbs on the surface, again, make sure you have clean and dry hands. I'm just going to work those crumbs mostly in a circular fashion around the surface of the book. I'll do a light pass over the entire book. And you'll note that I'm careful around the edges here. I'll come back and get the edges by brushing the crumbs off the edge or by going back and forth along the edges rather than in a circular motion. The last thing I want to do is catch the edge of the book and bend, crinkle, or horror rip the cover here. So I'm, I'm going to work around the edge in, in mostly a circular fashion like you see and careful around corners, careful around edges. Here I'll go straight back and forth to get this bottom gutter. And now as I'm going, I'm scanning the surface. And if I see any areas that look a little soiled, a little discolored, I'm going to spend some extra time on them. I am viewing this book through a LED ring light. So I'm seeing it at 10x magnification, which I highly recommend. CGC is going to grade your book with incredible light source and lots of magnification. So, so any flaws that your book may have are going to be on display. And here you see you can reuse these eraser crumbs a few times. So I will scoop them up, pinch them up, put them back on the book, put them back over areas that need some additional cleaning. This is one of those areas. There's some heavy soiling in here and it's going to require coming in with my Mars Stadler eraser. And I'm going to check it often, especially initially. I don't, I'm not lifting yellow with it there. That was a little bit of the soiling that I lifted, and I clear that on my hobby mat. This is one of the few areas on the book that I think would benefit from a traditional eraser type dry clean because that heavy soiling does not clear quite as nicely with these eraser crumbs. Again, I check the eraser, not lifting any yellow discernibly here. It does look like there's a little bit of patchiness in terms of the pigment there, but I don't think we're making it any worse. Probably a result of the glue that was smeared along this amateur restoration job. So we're going to probably be dealing with that area again soon. Satisfied with that, I'm going to continue to work some of the other areas on the book. I haven't really come up with a great method to put these eraser crumbs back on the book. And it, it might be smarter to just get fresh ones every time, but I'm a little bit frugal too, so, and I don't like to be wasteful. I think these crumbs can be used several times before you want to discard them, and, and I'll show you when we're done how much dirt and soiling they're going to pick up from the surface of the book. And believe me, they're, they're not there yet. These eraser crumbs from the bag do not have a brilliant white color. They're a little bit off-white, sort of almost a f have an orange or a pink kind of hue to them, almost like a flesh color. I'm going to get some fresh ones for the front cover here. Just try to spread them around. They are a little messy, and you do have to spend a little bit of extra time with cleanup. But the big advantage of this is that you can get general soiling off the surface. 
especially the kind of general soiling that is more or less uniform that just dulls the whole surface it's not practical to to erase that with a regular PVC white eraser because you're going to get eraser lines and streaks in the surface We're, and I, I want to avoid there's a little pencil written C in the 10 cent price tag there and I want to avoid that because I want to leave that I like the provenance of that little whether that was written by the person at the newsstand or most likely or maybe the owner I want to leave it so I'm pointing that out reminding myself not to erase too much over that so these will clean the surface of 80 years worth of dust and really small debris especially like I said that has a uniform covering on the book and they're just going to brighten the whole surface of the book without lightening any one area discernibly so that your eye isn't drawn to it and this is why these are the favorite and preferred material to use by paper conservation scientists who are working in a museum or library preservationists this is their go-to tool for cleaning up documents in a non-destructive way that's going to be really non-invasive and conservative and that's why everyone should have this in their toolkit you can use the abzerine sponges or a kneadable eraser to get a similar effect but i think this is actually the best tool for many of the jobs again where you have this kind of soiling where it's just kind of a dull surface that needs to be brightened up general dust or light soiling that's uniform across the cover now this isn't perfectly uniform there are areas that are a little more soiled than others and that's why you see that i'm spending more time for example in this yellow field here and I'll spend some additional time along this left-hand gutter by the spine. But the entire surface is benefiting from this cleaning. I don't know if you can tell from camera, but I can definitely see a brighter surface here. And again, the beauty of these, they're very soft. They're actually almost mushy in that you can you can kind of mold them like uh, that what is it mundo or whatever that the I think my daughters had when they were younger if you smush it together it kinda of will stick together a little bit you'll see when I pile it up or you might have noticed already when I pinched it so it's very soft non abrasive and it just does a great job of getting that surface cleaned up so you see now the eraser crumbs are a little bit off-white they're looking a little bit grayish from the material that they picked up again they started life off-white cream uh, definitely a warm color so this is a bit tedious but actually it takes less time generally than other dry cleaning methods that I've used if I were to try to clean this entire surface with a eraser with the Mars Stadler eraser for example it would take me longer than it will take me to do with these crumbs from the document cleaning pad you can also buy them if you're going to use them in bulk you can actually buy them in a canister from Lineco, similar to how you buy Parmesan cheese, where it has a top that you twist and you can sprinkle the crumbs directly on your work and then rub them around. When they sell the bulk crumbs, they call it document cleaning powder. And I'll put a link to that in the description as well if you want to just go ahead and dive right into bulk hood. If you get a pad, this is how it comes. And they, I think they may have several different sizes. So these, 
are the used crumbs now on the top. I've cleaned them up and put them in a pile. And I'm going to get some fresh crumbs here just to show you how much cleaning action has happened. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit onto the page, not to be too wasteful. As a matter of fact, I'll police them up and put them back in the container after I show you here. So as I was saying, a little bit off-white in almost like a warm tone, a little pink or orangish flesh kind of color. But look at the difference. So you can see now how much total material dirt has been lifted from the comic book. It did a great job. Also, look at how tiny the grain is. Now, an alternative, if you don't want to buy this material, is to just take a PVC eraser and take a cheese grater and just make your own. But let me show you what that looks like, and I'll tell you why I typically don't do this unless I'm in a bit of a jam and ran out of document cleaning powder. So here are some of the shavings that you can make, the eraser crumbs you can make with a cheese grater. And notice they are brilliant white. They're harder and they're much larger. And so they just don't have the same surface area. They don't roll around on the page quite the same. And again, they'll work but they just don't work as well as the document cleaning powder does for this specific use. So there you have it. Hopefully you found that useful. And maybe you want to add document cleaning powder or a document cleaning pad to your toolkit for comic book conservation. Let's look at some stills. Starting with the back cover, the before is on the left and the after is on the right. Notice there's not a dramatic difference here. There's just a subtly brighter looking comic book and the document cleaning powder did its job beautifully. The book is just less dull. We've preserved the vibrancy of the inks while removing surface dirt that has accumulated over 80 years that was giving the book a dull appearance. There really is no better tool that I know of for this specific job. Here's the area that we clean with the eraser as well. And you can see from the before image, there was already some modeling in the yellow ink, but we've removed the soiling here admirably using the two tools in combination, and I'm happy with the result. Here are the still images for the front cover. Again, the before is on the left, the after is on the right. The difference here is a bit more obvious, I think owing to the large areas of the cover that are yellow, which have been noticeably brightened up. It's especially noticeable in the left and right gutters and along the top above the logo. Again, no other dry cleaning tool that I'm aware of will do quite as good a job as this document cleaning powder for this specific soiling. Having a look at the area on the top of the comic cover above the title, you really see where the document cleaning powder shines. That soiling that was going on there that the cotton round wouldn't address has been completely removed and in such a uniform fashion that there's just no evidence that it was even there. Thank you for joining me for this Golden Age comic book conservation video. Have you been using document cleaning pads or document cleaning powder on your dry cleaning projects? Let me know about your experiences with it in the comments. Next episode, we'll disassemble this 80-year-old comic book and get this cover wet, so don't miss it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon to be notified of when we put the next episode up. Until next time, take care of one another.